Close. Oops, LinkedIn says you're not approved. Whatever. All right. Then. Okay. All right. You're live. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to uh, another episode of Just Two Dads. I am a co-host, Brian Altunian. <laughs> I'm laughing because, <laughs> Brett, you're going to find out. Every week we have some new technological thing that happens on our show. And we're cool with it, right? It's, it's kind of like the days of live TV. Now we're live social media broadcasting. Uh, I'm your co-host, Brian Altunian, here with uh, my, my, my close friend, Sean Francis, and our special guest today. I'm very excited to, to, uh, to talk to him today. Um, just want to welcome everybody who is either, either watching us live or catching us on our YouTube channel or on podcasts. We're now on about 15 different outlets and platforms from uh, Spotify, Pandora, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Uh, iHeartRadio, wherever you can hear podcasts, look up Just Two Dads, and uh, on our own radio show, WSTX AM Radio, down in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, we hope that you share the content that we uh, that we talk about on our on a regular basis. Share it with your friends and family, people that you know. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Um, we're going to be having today is going to be amazing compelling uh, content with you hear what Brett Lieberman is up to. Um, and we have a lot of great guests lined up for, for the show as well. Sean and I started this process a few years ago as uh, we both have children who have uh, some extra needs, right? I always say everybody's special and everybody has needs, right? So the reality is special needs gets lumped together. Um, we all have some level of special needs. My daughter had some learning disabilities growing up and I was I was uh, thrown into the community of, of special needs. And um, when I started, in, and I, I, I'm a serial entrepreneur, I started, I've started a bunch of businesses. And when I started this financial services business, I was thinking about communities that I wanted to impact. And my daughter said, well, dad, what community are we a part of? What community are we, you know, are we going to have? Uh, in fact, in fact, my daughter's on my daughter's on watching live as she does every week. I love it. Hi, Joe. Um, and so, uh, so she said, what community are we going to, are we going to talk about? And I said, well, why don't we talk about the special needs community? And I knew that Sean had a son on the autism spectrum. And I said to, and I said to Sean, you know, have you ever thought about doing this work that we do in the financial services arena for special needs families? He said, yes, I've been talking about doing this forever. Uh, let's, let's align our forces and, and, and do this together. And so for the last few years, we've been focusing a, a, an element of our financial services business for the special needs community to make sure that special needs families know that they have educational resources and therapeutic resources and so many other resources available to them, but there's also financial resources. And we wanted to make sure that we are leading the pack and leading the charge in, in that community that's so near and dear to our hearts. And they're communities that it's a community that we're a part of. And in our conversations with, with folks, we have come across some absolutely amazing warriors, people who have taken their circumstances and, made a difference in in the community and it's transcended the special needs community and it goes you know it, it goes out into so many other communities we've had the honor and privilege of talking to so many of those folks we thought why don't we just do a podcast and talk to these people and let's share with the world the amazing work that they're all doing so that so that we can extend the extend the village and uh and it really came up. Uh, that's how that's how the whole whole idea came about. Just two dads talking about things. And by the way, there are a lot of moms in the conversation and they are. We just celebrated International Women's Day and uh, recently. And, you know, we have warrior women that we love and support. We're allies for. But dads aren't all that willing to get into the conversation. So. Sean and I were like, let's do this, man. Let's let's be in the conversation. Let's be just two dads. So um, with that, this is this is born. And so welcome to our show today. Um, we're glad to have you, Brett. I can't I can't wait to get into the to work that you're doing because it's it's just another step in the evolution of what's happening um, for our children uh, dealing with special needs issues. Before we jump into that, I want to say, I Sean, your content lately, the work that you do, Sean Francis, you are not afraid to share who you are in the world with the world. You are going <laughs> through life, and we are active participants in watching in watching this happen. And I have to tell you, man, it is so amazing to see. I, I get 
I learned so much from you because of the size of your heart and, uh, and, and the reach of your voice. And it's an honor for me to be doing this with you, this podcast, the work that we do in this community and, and the work that we do in our business. And, uh, I love you, man. You are just one of my favorite people in the world. And, and I'm so glad to be doing this with you. So welcome. Well, thank and, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That means the world to me. Uh, I am uh, equally uh, grateful. Um, uh, for you and what we do and grateful for this opportunity. Grateful to be able to have uh, listeners uh, on St. Croix on uh, WSDX as well. Hopefully you guys are uh, uh, listening. And again, as Brian mentioned in the beginning, make sure you tune into our YouTube channel and uh, subscribe, share, and like. And with that said, let's jump right into uh, today. Our guest today is, as is the case each week, a warrior um, who battles mediocrity, mediocrity and um, does his best to level the playing field for those with um, disabilities and what we loosely refer to as special needs. The more I do this, we keep saying that that term, I don't know how much it applies. Needs aren't special. Everyone has the same needs. If you have a disability of some kind, the only thing you might have more of is more of a need than the average person for um, um, the same thing that everyone has a need for, which is to be heard, to be understood, to be seen. And with that said, welcome to the show, Brett Lieberman. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, well, we, it, we need some audience. Pleasure. Like we need, like we need to get an audience <laughs> track, right? So yeah, we do. We need that, right? That's kind of yeah, it's kind of like at uh, the Dodger Stadium. You need you need the sound effects. It's not the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe, right. it's maybe we'll we'll <laughs> figure that out and pipe that in next time. They, but no, um, I don't want to I don't want to take away any more from um from your time. And we're going to talk about you know uh, yes I can your organization and everything and what you do. But every hero has an origin, whether you follow Marvel, DC, or create your own characters. Um, heroes don't usually just wake up being heroes. So with that said. Tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up, your origin, what made you who you are and led you up to the point where um, we have the creation of uh, Yes, I Can and tell us about what the awesome. program consists of. But start with you. No, absolutely. I think I think you're definitely right on. I would say uh, my inspiration would have to be my father. Mm -hmm. um, he was involved in special education and all through my upgrade up up bringing, uh, you know, he would make sure I would come to the school and I would meet all the students. And um, I, I, I think from a very early age, he instilled uh, acceptance and tolerance. And um, that kind of trickled, trickled through. Um, I was kind of at a standstill. I, I have a passion for music and I have a passion for education. And uh, my father kind of sat me down and I said, you know, what What do I do? It was kind of like during the Napster time where people were stealing music. And I'm like, this is kind of a scary time to jump into the music industry. And he said, you know, why don't you just kind of combine both of your passions and see where that road lies? And uh, that's exactly what I did. Um, I worked in a classroom as an instructional assistant and I was throwing concerts at the same time to uh, kind of pay my way through college. And um, I, I ended up working with a student that was very severely uh, handicapped and, it, it, you know, she just kind of went through AIDS left and right. And after the first day uh, getting bitten, uh, she actually threw up on me on the first day. And, mm. um, you know, I, I, I went back the next day and I realized, like, if, if I can handle that, uh, obviously, I got something in my heart, and and this is maybe something I can do. So, uh, working with that student and seeing the the light that I was able to share and, and shine through her, I decided to uh, really pursue special education. So, that's the route I went. Um, at the same time, still still doing music, and uh, you know, fast forwarding. Uh, I was able to, like my dad said, combine both of those with uh, with producing a, a music festival that I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit later, um, the Summer Meltdown Autism Awareness Music and Arts Festival. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think my father was the the champion that really, uh, you know, lit that fire for me. And um, after, you know, being an instructional assistant, I then went into uh, teaching in the classroom and, and I've been working with uh, the high functioning autism population for 20 years now. Mm, okay. So your work is, is primarily 
um, and this is this might be out of chronological chronological order because we're going to talk sure. about. Um, uh, yes, I can. But obviously, you know, to be part of the program, there needs to be some type of, type of capability that one must have as a result of that. Then that is why uh, I'm assuming that's the reason why you, the population that you work with is targeted to uh, high functioning. Then, Sure. Yes. So in, in, in high school, I had um, my first year teaching, I had 13 students and um, the, the big point was inclusion and, and they would st uh, sit off to the side on the campus and students, you know, there'd be 2000 students and they would be absolutely ignored. So um, mm. they said, you know, what, what can we do that we would be accepted and people would actually notice us? We feel like we're invisible. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what do you guys want to do? They're like, well, you throw concerts. That's pretty darn cool. Like, what if we were to like throw a concert? So I said, well, it, it takes a lot of work and, you know, um, it's not just something you just, you know, whip up. And they're like, so are you saying we can't do that? And that was like, that was the challenge right there. <laughs> there it is. Got the throne. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, well, you know, let's, let's, let's try it. And I was able to reach out to a lot of resources and, uh, you know, the students learned on how you, you book a venue, you do insurance and how you book artists and it was pretty successful and we had you know a few hundred people show up and you know i'm used to having you know a few thousand people show up and they were like but you know we have parties and we don't even have like 10 people show up like this is this is amazing yeah. so uh I, I built on that and each year um we just kind of used the communication and and built on it we um booking artists um from trapped to um dirty heads to modest yahoo to you know the marley's um wow. it's 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 the summer meltdown festival and the, the best part is that the students get to work side by side with music professionals uh from all all walks of life so uh we're bringing in you know real big mobile stages prg uh four wall who who do the lights of the academy awards and any wow. if you're gonna you know gonna go to a, a Coachella rat sound is you know the the main sound those are the people who did our sound so the students um what what I started to see was students were like uh getting job opportunities I even had wow. one student who was obsessed with water irrigation and um you know people might think like well what are you going to do with water irrigation and he walked right up to the the light board and was able to program the lights off of understanding how to program sprinkler systems on a on a you know mass scale magnitude wow 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 and then um i started seeing them actually getting job offers right there on the spot and that kind of what led to uh to yes i can i, I partnered up with a, a dear friend uh kirsten fitzpatrick who also uh saw the that there wasn't um the support for students they they go through the high school system and then it just drops off. The IEP protects you for so, so much. And then right. you're th kind of thrown into um, college. In college, if you don't have strong executive functioning skills and you don't have the support system, what we were seeing was students would take one class, maybe two classes, fail one class, then repeat that class, fail that class. And uh, they were kind of dropping off. So... Uh, we got together and we said, you know, there's a 90% unemployment uh, rate for those with disabilities. And uh, we know that these students have tons of abilities. What if we could tap into their abilities and help level out the playing field and be a catalyst and a fulcrum of change and get them job opportunities? So we put our two heads together. Uh, Kirsten is is absolutely a, a you know a genius, and our, our two brains we work completely differently, but we're a great team. <laughs> and uh, she said, you know, we need to work with the regional center. We wanted to make sure that our our program was free to families and to students. Mm -hmm. And um, we, you know, we worked on it for about two years, and and uh, you know, we're we're now two years into it, and we're seeing students actually getting paid internships. Uh, following their passions, tapping into those abilities. Uh, Sean spent an evening with us last night and got to meet some of our students, but we have students that are pursuing um, animation, voiceover work. We have students that are doing video game design, uh, students that want to be involved in the music producing side. Um, we have lots of really exciting stuff. We're, we're partnering with a very uh, cool 
uh, thing that's kind of kind of under wraps, but uh, 1500 <laughs> Sound Academy. Uh, but they are like the the best when it comes to producing uh, hip hop and R and B. It's Grammy Award winning producers, and through the regional center and and the relationships, we'll be able to take students and allow them to learn how to produce music, write music, perform music, and show them all of the different jobs within the music industry. And what we like to do is show the students. I was talking about this with Sean last night when we when we think about. Um, you know, when you watch a movie and you see all of those names at the end of a movie, um, all of those jobs are just as important as the Brad Pitt and the Martin Scorsese. Like we kind of get lost on just the the star names, but um, everyone is just as important. You can't do it without the coloring. You can't do it with the ADR. You can't do it without the editing, uh, yep. you know, the the editor, just all of it. So uh, that's what we try to do is just kind of show them that there's there's many jobs that you can fall into. And with guest speakers that kind of come through our program, we, you know, sometimes they go like, oh, you know, when when you describe the students in your program, I kind of feel as though those are the people that are already working right by my side. You know, so it's a lot of people who just haven't been diagnosed and they, they are just focused in on those jobs, those really high end cameramen or special effects artists. So um, so. How how long has the festival been around, and then how long has sure. Yes I Can been around the program? So uh, Yes I Can uh, has been around uh, kind of at the the start. I, I I taught a class called Yes I Can where I, I paired students with special needs and um, students in the general education setting, and mm -hmm. through working with both of those uh, types of students, I started producing the festival. Um, kind of taking it to the next level is definitely being able to um, do the meltdown without having any restrictions when it comes to a, a high school setting. So uh, the, the festival is produced 100% by the nonprofit. The nonprofit's been around since 2007. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it, it's just amazing because, uh, like I said, you, you get to see the students really honing in on, and it's stuff that they can add to, to their reels. They can uh, add it to the resume and the skills that you would use on producing a music festival. You really do tap into the communication, the collaboration, you need to have resilience. Um, and those are, those are a lot of the things that we teach now within the nonprofit into uh, our students. So the, I'm sorry, Brian, just real quick. The, the Y I C Unity, as I can Unity dot org, is the is the nonprofit. It's, it's the nonprofit, yes. So you have a nonprofit. You've got the summer meltdown, and then you have the program, which is the school or training facility the, the, itself. The, the yeah, the training in the facility is uh, through the nonprofit. Um, mm, the, you know, the, okay. the yes, I can class, which is the class that uh, that I taught, and. Um, you know, yes, I can unity through music and education and the nonprofit is really the launch and the next step in the evolution of being able to help these students, uh, young adults, once they graduate high school. Gotcha. And I was going to ask Brett. So last summer, obviously with COVID, did you guys have the festival or we, we it... did not? We did not. Yeah, because, you were... know, and, and and probably this year, you know, uh, we're going to make sure that everyone's safe. We're hoping that, uh, you know, 2021 um and 22 you know once once everything's green lighted then uh then that then we'll move forward yeah good good and and so i'm looking forward because i know that uh sean was a speaker on your um in your class last night um mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to being on in a couple weeks and you know i have i come from the entertainment industry too i've spent about 20 years in the entertainment industry so you're right all of the below the line crew those are critical people. If they're not doing their job, doesn't matter how good Brad Brad Pitt looks. Camera light's <laughs> not the right thing. He's not gonna look so good, right? Yeah. Um, so those are critical people. And, and, and it is an interesting thing, you know. Um, what we're excited to have you too, Brian, as a guest speaker. And and that was one of the things that we did. Uh, we teach adaptability, and uh, you know, as a twenty first century skill. And we talk about like when you want to be like a cat. When you when you're falling down, you want to make sure you land on all fours. And Kirsten uh, decided. She said, "You know, we we need to take advantage of the fact that people are home 
uh, right now and not necessarily in the hustle and bustle of Hollywood, maybe that would work in our advantage as far as guest speakers. And she was absolutely right because the guest speakers, there's a lot of people that are just not in the studio and they're not necessarily doing it, you know, like tapping into golden voice and having someone from Coachella and live nation and uh, a big, huge event producers were able to uh, give us an hour of their time. And through the guest speakers like yourself, uh, there's lots of life lessons that these students learn and career exploration. This is how it has to be. If you can't really go into a studio and see someone doing their animation or seeing someone working on their special effects or the audio engineer and the sound design, this is the closest, the closest thing that you can get to right now. And we've seen a lot of the students kind of have that little light bulb moment go off where they're like, ah, oh, that's something that I think I would like to pursue and something mm. that I'd like to do. And then that's on our on our end to kind of go, all right, well, this is the education. This is, you know, the the road that you have to take. And a lot of the times um, we're finding that a lot of the guest speakers are offering mentorships and offering possible future internships. So after they yeah, meet the beautiful. students, uh, you know, obviously, like you guys know, there's there's lots of the talents and abilities. But uh, when people don't necessarily understand the students that we're working with after they meet them there, they go, oh, all right. Yeah, I'm totally willing to give an opportunity. Wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. We, uh, you know, we lived on, in, uh, you know, interns in the entertainment industry is, uh, you know, that's a storied, it's a, it's a storied background. Michael Keaton, who has gone on to have a phenomenal career, was an intern at uh, WQED in Pittsburgh, which is where they made uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Um, started out as an intern and then, you know, moved into production and had a phenomenal, has had a phenomenal career in the entertainment industry as an actor now and producer. And um, so the, you know, the in internship is such a key thing because to your point, I, I, and really what you're talking about, Brett, which is so amazing, like we're making this available to our, our, our young adults that have challenges or making the transition out of high school, but really life lessons that you're teaching it, I, like every parent of even neurotypical children would love their kids to have their to have their children have the opportunity to learn those life lessons and get hands on experience and hear from a, a mentor in the space and get a chance to intern. So what you're doing oh, is you know really transcendent. It's really it's really amazing. I appreciate Brent, that. Let me ask you, um, pre COVID, where were the classes uh, taught? Because obviously now everything is online. Uh, how was that being done pre COVID? We have office spaces in Santa Clarita, so we mm -hmm. would uh, hold our classes uh, in our office spaces. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, now we'll be teaching at the actual college at uh, College of the Canyons. So that's uh, something that's uh, that will start in July. So we're pretty excited on that. It will really help with the transition from students that are going to have a harder time coming from high school. Uh, college is a whole different ball game. Uh, there's no one, there's no one calling your mom saying mom or dad saying, Hey, you didn't show up to class. Uh, yeah. co college will collect your money, uh, one way or another, you know, and if you don't go to class, you just don't go to class. So, uh, we're looking forward to being that support system there. Mm -hmm. And also, like I said, teaching those 21st century career development skills that, uh, that are needed. Well, that's pretty remarkable and leads me into the question I was going to ask, because it sounds like you then during COVID, you know, you got kind of an upgrade because when we come out of COVID, you're expected to be as far as facilities go at a better situation than you were in pre-COVID, which leads me to ask. So then how do you, um, from a, a financial standpoint, do you, you know, are you accepting donations and, you know, do you exist on donations? How does that work, you know, as a nonprofit? Because you're yeah. doing something right. Yeah, we're, we're supported by um, the regional center, but we definitely are open to donations. Um, we'd like to really think outside of the box. We've done a, a few, <clears throat> excuse me, art shows. Um, you know, the Summer Meltdown Festival is obviously a mm -hmm. way to generate funds. Uh, but yeah, you know, donations, we we will not turn down donations. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we have a, an Amazon Smile account and, you know, people- oh, You can, do, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can definitely find us that way. 
I was going to say, I know just for people who are listening who may not know where Santa Clarita or College of the Canyons is, that's in Southern yes. California. It's in that mm -hmm. area, just uh, just north of Los Angeles, which, by the way, the L.A. studio system has expanded so much that there are studios out there now in that Valencia, Santa Clarita area. For people who have visited Southern California, that's where Magic Mountain is. Just let everybody know. That, um, that, but that's, the question, that's, Yeah, that's exactly you say Magic Mountain and people go. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Imagine, that's yeah, where yeah, it is. Imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but Robert Moorhead, who's who's uh, who's a frequent contributor to our show, and he's been a guest, and uh, he is uh, just a champion. Our side. He asked a question that I was thinking it. So the fact that Robert and I are sharing the same brain space now um, makes me a little nervous. But uh, but I was thinking <laughs> about this. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you appreciate that, Robert. But uh, Brett, if you like, how like this is such a great concept, and like. Is there a plan for, I mean, obviously COVID thrown everything, a wrench and everything, presuming that COVID, uh, you know, changes and we all go back to some sense of what, you know, a way of being together. Have you thought about recreating this in other locations and other areas or taking yeah. the, the summer meltdown festival to other cities and, and that type of thing? A hundred percent. You know, uh, I, we, a few years back, we had about uh, an attendance, I think between somewhere between like five and 7,000 people that attended and, uh, you know, the students were like, oh, my God, there's so many people here. What do we do? And I said, no, like this is this is the culmination of you guys working really hard. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, embrace it. That's that's why you have security. You have the sheriffs here. You know, you're safe. Just enjoy it. Um, but, yeah, the, with uh, we're expanding into the, the Los Angeles area right now. Uh, we have Santa Clarita and, and upward up north. Uh, but, yes, with with the Los Angeles expansion, uh, we'll be able to reach a lot of different areas. And uh, we just know that there's students that are hungry. We like mm -hmm. to definitely vet our students to make sure that um, they really have a, a passion and a skill set that they want to tap into. And then, like I, I mentioned before, it's really our work to support them through the entire process. Our, our program is a year long. Uh, like I said, it's free to the students. We pair them up with a counselor that checks in with them weekly. Uh, even once we get them into the uh, paid internship, uh, we have someone that is, is there to kind of uh, be on the side if they need any supports in, in that realm and, and working with coworkers and, and dealing with the boss. But the skills that we provide them, I know once I lock in a student into an internship, I know that they have communication. I know that they have resilience. They have self-awareness, uh, social diversity awareness, and uh, you know, they're, they're good to go. Really the way I look at it is sometimes a, a company might go, well, I'm taking a risk. And it, you know, if, if I take on one of these young adults and I said, really, you take on a risk when you hire anyone and you could have, you could have someone who doesn't show up. You could have someone who steals from you. Uh, you know, like you, you're taking a risk there. Why wouldn't you take a risk right now with someone who is stamped with these skills comes with supports and I'm letting you know that they have a skill that will be an asset to your company. They're going to know how to solve problems. And I was talking about this with Sean last night, that uh, it all comes down to analysis solution mindset. You know, you, you want to be a problem solver. And sometimes mm -hmm. businesses don't even realize that they have a problem. They think everything's gelling. And then you have someone who thinks outside of the box and right. you bring that to the table and you can save money, uh, you know, and these are students who are not going to be worried about social media and taking pictures. And, right. and these are, these are young adults that are hungry, that understand that these are opportunities that not everyone gets. And we realize, um, and entertainment is something that is pretty cool to be able to say you're working in the entertainment industry versus sure. I'm stocking shelves and um, I'm doing this and that where you're just not up to your full potential. And that, that that kind of brings the question. I know when Robert asked earlier, he was talking about, you know, other places. So I'm thinking of this in several realms, which is entertainment is cool and unique. So it, 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 it fits itself to Southern California. It would probably fit itself um, with New York as well. And I'm guessing Atlanta as well, because those are places where the industry, especially as far as film and television go, is quite um uh, you know, prevalent. That's even though the industry has been based here and then even in parts of Canada, but what about, and this might lead to what you were saying in terms of stocking shelves or something like that. What is the challenge involved in having um, 
a program like this in other places where maybe the jobs aren't as quote unquote exciting and maybe they're more blue collar, but other parts of the country or even as far away as the U.S. Virgin Islands where we have listeners as well, but people who are willing to and wanting to be a part of something. I guess it's, I, I, I try to avoid two part questions, but that's a general thing. But then the other thing is, could the answer be um, lie in the online portion in, in, in terms of you accepting a student that might not be here, not local, but able to get online and take part in the program? Sure. So um, I'm, I'm going to answer that part of the question first. So obviously, Zoom has been a, a great platform. And yep. uh, we're seeing like, you, you know, you mentioned Spotify. Spotify announced that, uh, you know, their their workers can work from anywhere. Uh, yep. You know, they can live anywhere. So Zoom um, it has been amazing. So, yes, I, I feel as though we can the skills that we're teaching in the program, uh, like Brian mentioned, are skills that you need in any job. They, they cut across their their uh, soft skills that are needed that are not necessarily taught, but they're ones that you can continue to, you know, to to build upon. So, um, yes, uh, most definitely uh, using a Zoom platform and being able to reach people from, you know, all different parts. Uh, as far as skill set, yes, entertainment. Uh, the reason why we chose entertainment, like Brian mentioned, Santa Clarita has tons of studios. And when we thought of like the music industry, you can have tattoos, you can have a mohawk, you know, everyone has their little, you, you can be different and still be accepted. So uh, obviously having the background that I have in music, uh, that's where we tapped into that realm. But it does cut across. There's abilities that can be used in in all realms of, of the work sector. Um, we were talking about like in, in San Francisco, obviously a very booming digital uh, location where programming and coding, uh, yes, those skills could uh, could apply and and could could work in that area as well. Yeah, so there's there's two basic areas. You've got your the your demographic of of the student and that that student who's transitioning out of high school and looking for employment. You're providing some skill set in in general for those for those students. And then the other side of it is an exposure to that to that community, to the film, entertainment, and music industry. So I'm thinking like if you took your program right now and and created a duplicate in Austin, Texas, for example, you've got live festivals with Austin City Limits, you've got you know film and television and digital, like you've got a, 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 a massive entertainment center in, in Austin, Texas. Nashville, obviously, Nashville, Tennessee as a as a music center and now be building an entertainment base. And as Sean mentioned, Atlanta as well. Like there are there are centers now of entertainment where, you know, locally it would be great to get, you know, to have, <laughs> listen, hey, Brett, we're gonna tell you what you should do. Uh, no, but it would be great to, to see your program <laughs> be expanded, right? Especially because of Zoom. Now we have no limit, physical limitations really. So anybody can, 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 can get their the education from you no matter where they're located, but then be able to move into those areas in, in, in local, in their local communities where there's bustling industry. And, and I, you know, listen, Austin, Texas, my family that live there in Austin, Texas, their slogan is keep it weird, right? Like there's like, there's, there's folks all, you know, I'm gonna say there's folks all over the spectrum, but there's folks all, of all kinds of abilities um, in Austin, Texas. So, you know, that's I have, I have been to Austin, Texas quite a few <laughs> times and I would, I would tend to agree with you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, but you're right, you know, South by Southwest and, and Austin city limits, there's, there's beautiful festivals that are produced there yeah. and um, you know, tapping into the state and the support we've, we've got it to where after they go through our program, they can step into uh, they, they move into another sector where they can get that paid internship. And through the state, they have the ability to earn up to $10,400 during a six month internship. So I know when I interned, there was no money. I was spending my own gas and it was kind of like, get what you get out of it. And uh, you know, at some point you kind of got to go, well, I'm using a lot of gas and I'm using a lot of time, <laughs> but this allows them to really explore, have that support financially. And I explain an internship is all about soaking it up like a SpongeBob, learn as much as you can. And you talked about the, uh, the production assistant. And sometimes my students are like, well, I want to be the director. I'm like, you're not going to be the director right away. You need to uh, 
uh, find your way and work your way up. And there's nothing better than a production assistant. And we've had a guest speaker in that realm talk about you learn verbiage, you learn all of the different uh, jobs that go into it. And you can move your way up just by, we had a, a guest speaker who moved up very fast just by being that person who understood exactly what everyone on the set needed. And we, we had Dorothy McKim from uh, from Disney, who's got a, a long, long career in in uh, animation and production. And she talked about on one of the movies or, or one of the, um, I think it was a movie, the coffee guy who would make sure that they all had their coffee and knew every sing single person's order uh, made it onto the credits. You know, as like, uh, uh, but it, you should, know, I, it should be high up in the credits. That's a significant <laughs> role right there. There, you know, production but, doesn't happen without coffee. I'm telling yeah, you right now. Yeah, but and yeah. even we've had guest speakers who <laughs> talked about in the studio uh, being the people that would uh, get the rooms ready. And uh, there was one time that um, it, Nas uh, and uh, Damian Marley were recording, and the actual producer had to step away, and they were inspired, and they wanted to record right there on the moment. And the, the person who was setting up the room, they said, "Get in here and run the session." And he did. And, you know, actually, that was one that I think won a, won a Grammy and he got a credit for it. So wow. it's, it's it's all about being at the right place, the right time. And, um, you know, you, you, you got to pay your dues. Always is right time, right place, right time. That's it's it's fascinating. I, I, I love that. And again, that's, you know, to, to know that there's a there's a place for our, you know, our, our children to to get the skills, to understand the broad range of you know, skill set that they that they need to be successful in business and then to have the opportunity to to figure out where they'd like to go. It's um, it, it's great. I mean, again, the work that you're doing is 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 amazing. Um, so, and, and so it's funny, the great thing here is that you, is that Sean and I, you know, obviously work in the financial world, but Sean comes from a music background and I have entertainment background. So you're getting the best of the both of us today. So, you know, we, we, I know that I speak for, for myself and, and probably Sean here when I say, like, I love the fact that we're training, you know, folks on, on how to, how to look at this in the right, with the right perspective and step in. Listen, we live in Los Angeles where, you know, so many people come here from other places to be discovered or make it big or all that with no concept of the work that goes into it and the and the, the drudgery behind the, you know, the work to make to make the magic of movies and music happen. Nice. Um, and so the fact that you're giving them that skill set and having them put on festivals, that's that's really amazing. I, Brett, could you imagine doing, you know, a, a different version of South by Southwest with with your program where you're doing some, you know, film festivals and a music festival together. Uh, I, I would love, I would love to do uh, something like that. Even working with, uh, you know, South by Southwest. I went to South by Southwest um, just as someone who, who wanted to make connections and, and I enjoyed the shows, obviously enjoyed the barbecue, but um, <laughs> you know, I met, uh, I met Cisco Adler and Swayze. I'll tell you how determined I am a, a, as a, as an educator the students wanted Swayze and, and Cisco Adler and uh, it was at the time um, we had MTV and they had an MTV show. So I went to two of their showcases and on the last showcase, um, I just pretended that I needed to, uh, to talk to them and security was like, you know, what, what, what are you doing? And I said, Oh, I, I have a, I have a meeting, you know, do I need to call them? And the security was like, Oh, just go ahead. So I ended <laughs> up going backstage and uh, they're like, kind of like, so who, who are you and why are you in our dressing room? And I just said, oh, well, you know, I'm an, I'm an educator. I, I throw a festival and I, I do it with my students. And you're actually on number one on the wish list this year. Um, what do we have to do to, you know, kind of make it happen? And they're wow. like, so you, you went past security, you flew all the way out <laughs> to Texas to, to meet us. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and enjoy the barbecue and, and you know, some other guest speakers. <laughs> And they said, all right, well, we're going to play it. And I said, well, you know, and I'm, I'm so used to like red tape and, you know, I'm like, do I have to talk to the manager? Do I, you know, your, your agent, what do we do? And they're like, no, 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 uh, in, enjoy the show, uh, you know, have a beer and uh, we'll, uh, we'll take care of it when we all return from Texas. And, and to their, to their word, Cisco Adler, a great human being, Shwayze, a great human being, uh, they made it happen. And they played our festival two years in a row and brought friends. Wow. 
Wow. That's fantastic. So um, I, I'd like to give, you know, a shout out to those bands who, who really get it. You know, um, yeah. we've had a lot of artists that the students uh, discovered and, and were popular and had every right to say like, hey, no, we need to be paid, you know, this amount of money. And a lot of bands refused uh, m- money and, and just came out and performed. And so uh, it, it's really, a, it shows how many people work in the industry. And to show a student, hey, you just can't put a, a band's name on a flyer. It has to be a certain font. It needs to be at a certain, it, it, everything is so calculated. And I think that's what they're really seeing also when we have guest speakers in uh, the production realm and the marketing realm everything is well thought out. You know, the, the toys that you see at Disneyland and the merchandise is being worked on two years in advance. Even during COVID, they're still uh, working on things, you know, for your enjoyment. So um, it, it's really cool to have real, real examples. You know, we talk about social diversity awareness and um, there's nothing better than like bringing up uh, the, you know, what happened with uh, Lucasfilms and, uh, you know, Gina with uh, with Star Wars and uh, The Mandalorian. And those are real examples. And I think with this population, you have to make concrete examples for them to to get it. You can't just use figurative language. And even just like the Miami Heat player, uh, you know, filming himself on on Twitch and, and kind of using hate speech like you, you got to be held accountable. And these are the things that we're trying to, uh, to teach these young adults to make sure that they're successful in every, every walk of life in the entertainment industry. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What is, um, Brilliant. what's the biggest challenge that you face in doing all of this? Because when I think of us just sitting here, there's some serendipitous things that can take place in terms of putting you in contact with people, but to just, and I know it's, not as simple as it sounds, but to just jump up, jump up and decide, you know, we're going to put a festival together and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do concerts. That's what I'm going to do. You know, that's not like getting a DJ and, you know, having a keg or a cooler in the backyard and then some people show up and maybe you get some bands. We're talking about sizable undertaking. What's the biggest challenge that you've experienced? And is there any difference putting together something like that tied to the special needs community than there would be otherwise? Sure. You, you know, it, it, there's so many, so many steps that you have to take. And um, you obviously need a great support system. I've been blessed with people who really see the vision and, and support it. Um, but yeah, it is, it's a lot harder than you, than just grabbing the, uh, the keg. And I mean, you're talking about city permits and clearing dates yeah. a year in advance. Uh, you're talking about dealing with the sheriff station. Um uh, health department when you're bringing in food and you, you know, you wouldn't believe that you actually need clearance even when you're given chips backstage, you know, to the students, like mm. everything has to, you know, uh, be well so thought litigious out. now too. Yeah. Yes, so yes, 100%. You, know, somebody, you know, yeah. If somebody could see you for stepping on a, uh, a sharp chip. I mean, you know, right, right. It, it, yeah. It's honestly, it's time, but, uh, yeah. there's, there's not enough, time in the day. I think Kirsten and myself work extremely hard. We're, we're constantly on the phone, um, constantly championing relationships and, and networking. We really practice what we preach. We tell the students, you need to be on LinkedIn. You need to be networking. You need to get out of your comfort zone. And we really have no problem doing that ourselves. Um, I have no problem, like I said, going up to a band in Texas going, hey, this isn't something for me. This is something for my students that are going to benefit. Uh, And and that's why I I like to do what I do. My my, my dad kind of said, and I talked about this with Sean last night, my dad had a mantra, make your passion, your paycheck. And um, I think my passion with education, my, my passion with music and coming right back to, uh, to what my dad said with blend your, you know, your two, your two passions, you'll be happy. Uh, it makes getting up uh, each day for work that much uh, greater. Yeah, no, I mean clearly you're you have you have fans, and I can't believe we put up on the on the screen for those who are just listening that uh, somebody said you know Brett is the best, such a great guy with an incredible passion to help others. Grateful to hear the episode, Brian Vasquez. Thank you for uh, for commenting. I um I was going to say, uh, uh, Brett, it, it can't be just the two of you. Is it only just the two of you running your we, whole organization? We we do have a team. We do have uh, a board okay. of, of directors that really um, that we run everything by. But we have 
talented people that really support and and see the hard work. You know, Brian, who who just chimed in, was was a guest speaker like you guys were, and um, you know, it, it it takes special people to to help and support. You know, obviously, we we need all the help. You know, it, it takes an army and a village um, to to change. Uh, you know, the, the narrative because 90% unemployment, if you, if you really think about it, if we don't start working on this now, when you think about the homeless population, these, these are going to be this population. And when That's, we think, you know, yeah, like, yeah. no, no yeah. one really, no one uh, stops to kind of really think about that, but, um, and they're talented. You know, how many yeah. of these, how many maybe homeless people are out there that you think might be crazy that really have all these skills and just didn't have the support or someone who kind of directed them in, in the right way. And I kind of yeah. feel as though um, if indeed someone just kind of did what we're doing right now, we could have, someone could have changed like the direction. All, all it takes is one person or one teacher, one person to inspire you to go into one direction, one teacher to believe in you. Um, yeah. And I, the best part is, you know, we talk about that population of students who are coming out of high school, but we have a lot of students that are, are coming in, you know, in, in their 30s going, all right, I haven't done anything that I really want to do. I have a, a student that has a job, a, a great paying job, but really wanted to pursue voiceover, mm -hmm. uh, voiceover work. And uh, just he's he's not happy, he's, but he's got a great job. You know, other people would be killing for uh to get a steady paycheck and have time off and, and all that stuff but this is a student through the program we, we had um one of the heads of uh, disney adr who was kind of explaining what voiceover looks like for pixar and and whatnot and i told the students that if you don't speak up for yourself no one can just look at you and go oh you want to do voiceover oh you want to mm -hmm. you know be a video game editor so this student Wrote, you know, took took the opportunity to raise his hand and said, you know, I would like to get some advice. You know, I, I've recorded a, a reel. I've invested in myself. I've taken classes and I just like to see, get some feedback. And he actually was able to go down to Disney. He auditioned and, uh, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but good things are, are in his near future from that experience. And uh, it, there's something special about being a connector. And That's absolutely. fantastic. That's fantastic. And yeah, I know it's customary to thank you for being here, generally speaking, but I, I'm going to thank you because you've just shined a light on something uh, for me. As, 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 as you know, and Brian and I have, have discussed and people that know us know we're in financial services and we talk about preparing parents for children uh, or individuals with special needs for a time when the adult exists in memory only and that it talks about financial instruments in terms of the right type and amount of life insurance retirement debt management estate planning and all those kind of things but how vital would it be for us to be able to connect with somebody that can um further that level of preparation because not everyone is going to be in a situation where they need a plan in place because they're helpless everybody needs you know a plan in place but then maybe an opportunity because they can be helpful if they're connected with the right person and those things go hand in hand. And um, I just, you know, my wheels are turning as we're talking about this stuff and, you know, um, who knows the, the, the ways in which we can um, help people by putting our, our heads together, by making sure that um, we create some kind of uh, some kind of path with more bricks or tiles, if you will, than we may have thought of otherwise. So I want to thank you for planning that in my head. Hundred percent, and 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 I'm all about uh you know working with other people who who want to in, invest in in the program and uh, just invest time, financials, what what have you. Like I said, it, it takes an army, and we are more than willing to uh, you know take advice on how to expand. Also, you know guest speakers. Um, I, I think everyone brings lots of value. Anyone, you know, I was told, you know, you got to listen to your your elders. Like everyone has has lessons and experience that they bring to the table, and it doesn't really matter what sector you're working in. I think students can gain uh, lots of lots of value. I think even something you said last night, Sean, was uh, wish we could be more childlike and not not so childish. You know, and that yes. that was something that like hit 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 home with me uh, today. 
and uh, something that I was, you know, talking about with with the students uh, as well. You know, it, it, it's a beautiful thing to think about when we're young, how we are so accepting and we we only learn kind of hate and to judge based on how we're taught, it, you know, like it, it, that that little thing just kind of it, it stayed with me uh, from from our session last night. So those are the little things that I'm talking about that can be really important life lessons. Well, right. and I also I also think that we learn in addition, we learn the ceilings and limitations that are imposed by, you know, outside outside influences. And uh, the one thing that I've I've always loved about the entertainment industry is that when you do find somebody who's willing to make a connection and open a door, um, you know, I do it a lot personally. I do a, I do a lot of connecting. I've I I because I know enough folks in the industry that when somebody wants to break into the industry. I'm always willing to, you know, make an introduction on with one caveat, like you don't don't thank me or anything. Your thank you is that when you land a position, and I make a phone call, and you know we want somebody else to be you that you're willing to sit down and have a conversation with somebody. We've sort of created this network of people who are willing to open the door, um, you know, have a conversation, you know, connect and be connected and and make connections. And you know, there are a lot more of those people in these industries than what we've stereotypically heard of or folks that are, you know, tell you no, or, you know, try to try to keep you out. So you're, you're what you're doing is, is absolutely amazing. I know we're going to have, we're going to have, you know, many, many conversations and, and I, I would love to see us do a, you know, do a, a, another version of a South by Southwest with both music and, and a film festival with, you know, with the, the folks come through your program here across the country in the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico and every other place where we have reach. Um, because there are just so many talented folks that just don't know how to get that, get that, get that start or where to even go to learn the kinds of skills that you're talking about, Brett. So, um, you guys are doing amazing, amazing work. Your website is absolutely beautiful. People should go to that. Um, why I see unity.org. I'll put it up on the screen again. I think Sean Hall, uh, our producer can put it up on the, um, on the chat and we'll, we'll put it up in connections. Uh, I think I have the one that has the music festival, but it's why I see unity.org. It's how you can reach Brett's, um, Brett's organization and uh, see the festival. It's absolutely beautiful what you're doing. I can't wait to, to, to be a guest speaker. And we've got Sean and I are already like <laughs> back channel communication <laughs> of all the folks that we want to introduce to you to be guest speakers um, to continue to further this this effort. So I personally want to, you know, thank you. I, I can, like time always is a weird thing. I, I think during the during the pandemic, people are like, I don't even know what day it is anymore. For us, like we have no idea what time it is anymore. And we whip through these conversations. We're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Almost an hour is uh, is up. So I'll I'll just want to say thank you. I you know Sean was, is going to ask you what uh, he asked and ask you a question that we end every show with. So let's do that first and then, and then we'll say goodbye. Perfect. Sure. Especially it's either going to come to you very quickly. You're going to have to search for the answer. So <laughs> think of a belief that you held onto and, um, and would almost guard and protect and th that you believe with all your being, um, a belief or a thought that you now think otherwise about. It's a good question. Put on, put on the spot. Now, nah, let me put people on spot with this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if it's necessarily um, a thought that I really had. I, it's more of a thought that I see other people have, and mm -hmm. it's the under underestimating um, the students and and um, that you know they're some are not capable and uh, you know not not successful. I think I kind of I might not be answering your question, but I feel as though um, I like to change that narrative. I, I like to change what the the stereotype, and I like to get mm -hmm. rid of the label. And uh, that's kind of what drives me each day. Um, you know, Brian was talking about like there's there's more connectors out there than people who say no. And right. I've reached out to a lot of people, and. Um, you know, hundreds and thousands of people, you know, there are those mm -hmm. ones that say no. And right. uh, we, we kind of get, we get stuck on those ones who say no, but the, yeah. but the, I, I guess I'm still not answering your question. Well, let me, let me, let me reword it because the okay. idea is to, is to sort of 
uh, foster the ability to, uh, through, through example, uh, change. So uh, if you just think of one belief that one thought that you just like, no, this is, this is how I do such and such. This is how such and such a thing is done. Something that you just know to be such a, you know, a belief, a habit, a practice that you have that, you know, years ago uh, was just part of your being so much so that you thought you might always think that way where you now think otherwise. I think, okay. I think, uh, you know, uh, sometimes beating yourself up uh, with, with failures, um and kind of getting on your on your on myself for certain things i now learn were blessings and and mm. lessons and provided a lot of growth you know and uh sometimes you just say like why did i do that or why did i i stay in that relationship or this or that and i think in the end uh everything kind of does happen for a reason there's there's many roads that you can take but mm. learning from uh failures I, I think that's one of the things that I try to instill in the students that you think about um, the Harry Potter author getting knocked down and being told that no one, you know, a, a book about a wizard is pretty stupid. Get out of our office and getting right. rejected several times, uh, you know, 20 plus some of times. And then finally having someone who finally does believe. So uh, kind of also going back to, you know, if you have a vision and you think that something is going to be great and you want to do something, Keep mm -hmm. pushing forward and don't give up on that dream because it's kind of right around the corner. Right, right. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. And it's, it, it's just something for us to always keep in mind and we never get, get, get tired of that because um, what is is not something that always was, no matter how much it seems like it was meant to be destiny. Yeah. And, and I'm always about the underdogs. And one of these, one of our guest speakers, you know, like I said, everyone adds some really valuable thing, but one said, when you are moving forward, you can't look back and connect the dots and you can't self-reflect because we're constantly in motion. And we're moving forward and we're trying to do this. We're trying to do that. But when you right. just kind of take a moment and you look back, you can connect the dots and see how everything is interconnected and what certain things, you know, like even just reflecting for an hour with, with you gentlemen, looking back at the experience of working with a student that was so severely handicapped and, and having a brain injury and so challenging to where she would go through AIDS every week to not giving up. And what I learned from that experience and kind of seeing that tolerance and, uh, you know, putting those pieces together, all of those things, the road kind of has developed me to be the, the man I am to handle what I've got in front of me. Fantastic. Beautiful. Love Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, as we as we wrap up the hour and and Brett, thank you so much. I first of all, I've got twelve names down here of people that uh, bring I it on, Brian. Bring you it on as, far as, as guest speakers. In fact, one of our guests um, here, Dan Habib. Dan runs the media center for um, for disability studies at the University of New Hampshire, and he running that media center. He's a filmmaker and um, doing amazing work. His son has has cerebral palsy with a, you know, a little bit extra, you know, a little extra flavor to it, if you will. But his son is co-directing their next anime, the next documentary feature film. And it is um, spectacular. It is spectacular. Dan may be a, a brilliant person to speak, you know, to your, to your folks. So we're going to make some connections for you and I love can't it. wait to see, see the festival here and across the country. So on that, let's, we'll wrap up the, the hour just to give a, a shout out to everybody who contributed. And, um, you know, while we were on our live platform, anybody else who, who contributes, please share your, you know, comments and, and uh, ask us questions, share the video, share the, the, uh, the video, which will be on Facebook live for, um, for about a, for a week or so, actually, I'd probably be there a little bit longer. We have a YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and see some of the past episodes with some of these folks, such as Dan Habib and this Brett Lieberman is a uh, conversation is going to be one that's going to be played over and over and over again. I'm convinced of it. And um, on our podcasts, you know, subscribe, share, be part of our community. We want to expand this village and I'm sure that we're just scratching the surface. We're just getting started. And so I'm grateful to my daughter, Jordan, who loves to jump on and participate and say, you know, say hello. And so thank you, Joe, for being on the show. And Robert Moorhead as always, and anybody else who has contributed, we thank you. Sean Hall, who's our producer out in Hawaii, um, does a lot of the back offices. I kind of take over his duty sometimes. He, 
he, he sends me love notes when I do that. But I uh, want to thank everybody <laughs> for listening and participating. This is an awesome conversation. The hour just flew by for me, um, and I'm fired up. I'm already thinking about all the things that we're going to be able to, to do together, Brett. I, I really do. To I do guys. want to uh, thank you guys for the time, the platform, and uh, for the work that you guys are doing. I, I look forward to working with you both, having you, Brian, as a guest speaker coming up here. Um, but you know, it takes a village and, and I'm, and I'm glad to uh, team up with you gentlemen and, and make some change. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And with that said, I want to first, uh, again, thank everyone that's uh, watching us uh, live. That'll be watching on video form. Again, go to our YouTube channel. If you like anything that we're doing, go to the YouTube channel, like it, comment, subscribe, and share because um, we do feel that this is the, you know, information that needs to grow as much as we possibly can. We're trying to find answers together and shine a light on the people that are doing great work for the special needs community um, you know, above and beyond. And just remember, you know, there's somebody out there that needs to know that you care, that needs to know that they matter, that needs to be seen and that needs to be heard. And I want to make sure that I always, that I do as I always do. Thank the women in my life, my mom, Jan, and my amazing uh, wife, Laura. And without either one of them, I would not begin to be, to be able to even be who I am or attempt to be who I hope to be. So with that said, thank you very, very much. Um, and to our listeners in WSDX and St. Croix, thank you so much. Love you. If you're watching, you're listening, we love you. Thank you so very much. Empathy and love, everybody. That's what it's all about. Empathy and love. Share it. Amen. All right. Thanks again for joining.